Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in again. So after this surprising outcome of the presidential election, I've had some time to process things. And one thing I kept coming back to was this tarot reading I did like two days before or one day before the election. And I posted this online, I posted this on, on YouTube. And uh, like many of you, I genuinely thought it was going to be a, a, a victory for someone like Kamala Harris, especially given the predictions I've heard from others and my own reading, my own assessment of the cards. I didn't mention anyone by name. Uh, I saw the Three of Cups as a card of celebration and unity. The Knight of Pentacles as someone grounded, non-flashy, moderately progressive, a reliable figure. And the Six of Staffs as a card of unquestionable triumph. I did not mention any candidate by name, again. But in my mind, I was already thinking of someone, so I was a bit biased. Uh, but I guess it was sort of implied. You know, you, you could also understand it in the same way or interpret it in the same way by the way I was describing it. But as we all know, it turned out quite differently with the victory of Donald Trump. So I thought, what if we go back? What if we go back and take a second look on, on these cards? Maybe we can gain new insights and now that we know the outcome. And, and this time I wanted to consult ChatGPT. Maybe I was misreading these cards. Maybe these cards were telling, uh, telling me who, who was the right candidate to win. But I just didn't interpret these cards in that manner. So I asked ChatGPT, how it might interpret the Three of Cups, Knight of, of, of Pentacles, and the Six of Staffs or Wands, given the Trump's win. Maybe the cards didn't miss the mark, as I said. Maybe I just needed a different perspective to see what they were really saying. So let's recap on the original interpretation on this first video, which I did a week ago. I interpreted the Three of Cups as a joyful celebration, a sense of sense of people coming together after a long and hard fought process. I thought the Knight of Pentacles as a stable, dedicated figure, someone reliable and consistent. And the Six of Staffs, I read that as a triumphal, clear victory with public support behind it. Put together, I felt the reading was predicting a sense of unity and relief, a victory that people would feel good about. I thought it would be a sign of a Harris's win. And I saw it as a landslide of sorts, one that would be widely celebrated and accepted. But as it turns out, it was anything but that. Many of us couldn't sleep and the results left us in shock, regardless of what you think of the respective candidates. I think it would be fair to say the results surprised the world to say the least especially after so many called experts, political pundits, predicted a different outcome. So was I misreading the signs? Did the cards actually have pointed to a different outcome? If I'd looked at them from a different angle, perhaps? Let's dive into what an AI language model, in this case, ChatGPT, had to say about the cards, given Trump's win. So I went on and asked ChatGPT, and the AI suggested that the Three of Cups could still indicate a celebration, but not necessarily in a way that involves everyone coming together. In this context, it could signify the strong and perhaps unexpected unity of a specific group or base. The celebration might be limited to a certain group of people rather than the country as a whole. Trump's win could reflect this as it seems to resonate with a specific segment of voters who remain fiercely loyal to him. So while there was indeed celebration, it wasn't universal, but rather a victory celebrated by a particular faction. Now with the Knight of, of Pentacles, I originally saw this as represented perhaps someone like Kamala Harris, a steady, dedicated, focused on the long haul leader. But now looking back with 
ChatGPT's insight, we might see this card as pointing towards someone like Donald Trump. The Knight of Pentacles isn't flashy or loud, but determined, persistent, and focused on achieving goals, no matter how long it takes. If you ask me, I can think of no one lo louder than Trump, but okay, let's go with it. In this reading, Trump could em embody the, this knight's energy, not known for grand gestures or idealism, but for practical, enduring appeal to his base. The Knight of Pentacles doesn't rush or falter. He digs in and holds steady, which could mirror Trump's persistence in his core support among certain voters. And then you have the Six of Staffs, or Six of Wands. Finally, this card, usually a clear vic sign of victory, public recognition and support. ChatGPT suggests that this card might reflect the way Trump's victory was decisive in the eyes of his supporters who view it as a triumph, as a decisive triumph. The Six of Staffs doesn't necessarily mean a universally loved figure, but does indicate a confident, victorious stance. Trump's win, while not universally celebrated, is seen as a victory for those who feel their beliefs and values have been upheld. And let's face it, it was not just the electoral college that he won, he also won the popular vote as it's been counted so far. So it was quite decisive. And it might even be a Republican trifecta at this point, controlling both the Senate and the House. This card might show that regardless of the mixed public reaction, his win is still a triumph, a big one, to his supporters and for the world. You know, regardless of what anyone might think of this candidate, as I said. And it's a symbol of their ongoing influence. Okay. Reflecting on the alternative interpretation. So it's interesting to see how ChatGPT's interpretation provides a different perspective on the same cards. I went into the original reading with a certain expectation and honestly, some per personal biases about what these cards might mean. I was focused on unity, on the idea of the country coming together and that shaped how I interpreted these cards. But looking back, I can see how the same cards could have indicated a divided celebration, a steady yet polarizing figure, and a victory that doesn't necessarily bring everyone on board. Now, some final thoughts and a disclaimer as well. So I did the tarot, so did the tarot cards miss the mark? Or did I misread them? That's the question I'll leave up to you. ChatGPT helped me see a new angle, that's for sure. Maybe there's a lesson in this. Keeping an open mind with tarot and not letting our hopes and assumptions steer us from in, in one direction too strongly. And by the way, a big shout out to Joseph Hidayat. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it or mispronouncing your name. Sorry about that. But Joseph correctly predicted with his reading of a Kamala Harris loss with the card, the tower, which was just a big, big unexpected failure. And that reading came up twice for him. Thank you, Joseph. And I really appreciate your feedback. Having that extra insight helps you see tarot in a different light. It was re quite remarkable that you got that card twice. It was right before the election and that was astoundingly accurate. But let's get back to it. So here's a disclaimer. I did use ChatGPT in the first place to assist me with the first reading. So keep that in mind when forming your own ju judgment. Tarot after all is about exploring possibilities, not necessarily predicting outcomes with certainty. As I said in my original video, this is not really about predicting the future, but really more like trying to get a grasp of the possible outcomes. The cards might reflect energies and tendencies, but whether they can predict something as complex as an election, well, I think that it's still an open question. 
But if you're like my son, who is constantly asking me about percentages, and if you're into that sort of thing, uh, let's assign an ac accuracy percentage to this tarot reading, because why not? After all, now that we have AI models accessible that can be used as tools for this matter, let's see what it comes up with. Assigning an objective ac accuracy percentage to the Charo reading is inherently challenging. Given the subjective nature of interpreting the Charo cards and the multiple ways each card can be read in context. However, based on the cards drawn on the traditional meanings versus versus the actual outcome, we can analyze how closely the original interpretation aligned with the election results. Here's an approximate breakdown. Three of Cups, initially interpreted as a sign of universal celebration and relief, this card turned out to be somewhat accurate, but only for specific groups of people, rather than a widespread reaction. This indicates partial accuracy. ChatGPT gave me an estimated accuracy of a 50%. That's interesting. Then we have the Knight of Pentacles. Originally, I thought in my mind it would mean Kamala Harris based on the descriptions of what this archetype or this symbol, this person here represents, even though it's a knight. But actually, this card aligns well with Trump and with his persona, representing persistence and dedication to core supporters. This element turned out to be quite accurate, though it was attributed to the wrong candidate in the initial reading. The estimated accuracy level for this one is 75%. Now, with the Six of Staffs or Wands, this is seen as a sign of victory. This card accurately indicated a triumphal result. However, however, the interpretation leaned towards a universally celebrated victory, which wasn't the case. Estimated accuracy, 65%. Hmm, not sure if that number sounds right to me. If you ask me, it was not a matter of debate. Even though many people argue it was not an, a landslide, it was quite decisive. The overall accuracy assessment, taking an average of these estimates, we might place the reading objective accuracy at around 63%. This sounds about right. The percentage suggests that while the reading captured certain elements of the outcome, such as the victory and a sense of stability, the expectation of widespread a celebration and unity did not align with the eventual divisive reaction. Just to be clear, that would have been the case no matter what, or no matter who won. We live in a highly polarized country. No surprise there. Anyway, you be the judge. Tarot, in my personal opinion, is quite useful when it comes to personal insights and the day-to-day. -day. It is also a powerful tool of creative insight. I'll soon share with you an experiment I did recently doing daily readings for 30 days in a row. And I can't wait to share my findings with you. You'll be as surprised as I was when you hear all about it. But that's for another day. Stay tuned for it, though, and, and, and you'll see it soon. That video is coming up. Anyway, thanks for joining me on this fascinating exploration of the tarot and its possibilities. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think of the tarot? Can it accurately predict future events like this? Or is it simply a tool for self-reflection? Either way, I appreciate you all. And I look forward to hearing from you and whatever your thoughts are on this matter. Till next time, peace and clarity to all of you. And may the gods, the muses, the angels, whatever you want to call these cosmic forces, timeless archetypes, be your guides and source of inspiration. Till next time, peace. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for sticking around till the end. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, hit that subscribe button, and tap the notification bell so you don't miss out on future content.
Also, check out the video on the screen right now for more insights and inspiration. Your support means everything to me and helps this channel grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.